Hello and welcome to Rights and Recourse, a program that tackles constitutional, human rights and legal <coughs> issues, bringing you information and analysis. My name is Dumi Lemates. Remember, you can also be part of our discussion today by calling us on 011-714-5497 or 5498, or tweet us at Rights and Recourse. Alternatively, you can email your thoughts to Rights and Recourse at sabc.co.za. In his much revered book, The Wretched of the Earth, Franz Fanon writes, and I quote, people know where they are going and why. We African politicians must have very clear ideas about our people's situation. But this lucidity must remain deeply dialectical. The awakening of the people as a whole will not be achieved overnight. Their rational commitment to the task of building the nation will be simple and straightforward. First of all, the communications, methods, and channels are still development, development stages. Secondly, because the sense of the time must no longer be that of the moment of the next harvest, but rather the, that, that of the rest of the world. And finally, because demoralization bur buried deep with, within the mind by colonization is still very much alive. But we should, we should be aware that every victory over the pockets of least resistance, the legacy of the material and domination of the country is the requisite that no government can escape. Today on Rights and Recourse, we take a look at the initiative by several high profile foundations in creating the South African dialogue in the political discourse, the National Foundation Dialogue Initiative. But first, let's have a look at this insert. And after serious reflection, proceeding from their different positions, our national foundations have concluded that our country is immersed in a general and worsening crisis which impacts and will continue to impact negatively on our country and the rest of our continent, Africa. This is by no means to deny the significant progress in many areas that we have achieved during the years since 1994. Nevertheless, <coughs> Responding to our current reality, our foundations took the decisions that something has to be done as urgently as possible to address this general and worsening crisis. And this response must include the involvement of our people as a whole to enable these masses to exercise their rights to determine their destiny. That it was and is therefore important to put in place a true national dialogue which would practically involve these masses in all their echelons, thus to insert their views into the national discussion in an organized and concerted manner. That ultimately a document which would reflect a true national consensus about what should be done to end and extricate our country from its general and worsening crisis. And that this document should respect the spirit of our Constitution, uh, whatever amendments it might propose, if any. And this document would once more commit the masses of our people as happened after the 1994 elections and after the adoption of our Constitution in 1996, consciously and actively to support and promote the objectives it took state and the document would suggest that all state and other relevant institutions should act in a manner which consistently and honestly respects and promotes the popularly developed objectives and vision in that document. In summary, our national foundations have sponsored the National Dialogue Initiative, inspired to encourage the achievement of the objective to let the people speak. And so it must and will be that the National Foundations Dialogue Initiative creates a possibility that the people speak out freely in our democratic and constitutional space without let or hindrance to help determine their destiny. Well, that the former president of the Republic of South Africa, Mr. Thabo Mbeki, who now is chairman or of the Tabombeki Foundation. But first of all, let me, let me come to you, Mr. Schopen. Let us start with the theme of the inaugural dialogue. 
Why does South Africa need to have a national dialogue, a call to the nation? Thank you very much, Tumila. Uh, I think basically South Africa needs this particular initiative, not only now as is the year 2017. It is the initiative that started back in the year 2014 when number of organizations, beyond the number of organizations that were, were participating in the recent launch, it, we saw the need of getting the South Africans talking. We felt that uh, through our different initiatives, I can take, for instance, as one Umlambo Foundation with its own mandate of working with several uh, communities, that uh, there is a very strong need out there of hearing what the people are saying. We may be involved in the education development as an example. We also see the issues of governance in these schools and ensuring that we've got a strong leadership that does not necessarily look down upon the role that is played by women in our society. Now, coming into our participation in the as, as to why now, actually it was not necessarily a case of why now, but it was why South, Africa, South Africans are talking and not necessarily heard. How about creating that kind of a platform that is not going to limit itself into the political mm. parties and the political role players, but into the ordinary citizens in the ground? So that is basically how this theme came about in terms of let's come together from different sectors of society and ensuring that we include those organizations to see that we can create such kind of a platform of getting the South Africans talking and be heard in what they are talking about. The question really is, uh, what should South Africans be talking about? What are the issues? Very good. I think the issues, they vary in different social sectors. Uh, it could be health issues in terms of the communities. It could be the issues of uh, uh, service delivery that we have just seen in the form of kind of protestations, unfortunately, because as South Africans, we only see it through our media when it has erupted into a situation that is beyond measures of control. But there are, it, 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 it doesn't start there. The underlying causes will be those particular issues that get to be, the, to be, to be raised by individual members of society. It could be issues of education. It could be the issues that relate to how do schools get to be serviced in terms of the textbooks and all other necessary resources that make the schools to be strong and function in a, in a, better, in a better way. So in, 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 in a nutshell, this runs across in terms of the areas of needs that people talk about. People do not limit themselves. We may have limitations when we talk at political level, but when it comes to the communities, they are able to go further and talk across the spectrum in terms of what they, they see as matters of common interest and concern. Well, probably I should apologize. I did not introduce my panel. My panel is made up of Mr. Trina Shope from the Umlambo Foundation, and Ms. Nana Ngobese, Chief Executive of the Ngosi Albert Lutuli Foundation, and Mr. Max Bokwana, Chief Executive of the Tabumbeki Foundation. And later, we will be joined by Mr. Tien Yelov, Chief Executive Officer of the FW De Klerk Foundation. My apologies for having done that. Ms. Ngobese, the, I read somewhere, these foundations are deeply concerned about the state of the, our country and young democracy. They are, there's a view that the challenges we are currently facing, uh, we need, need to be attended to with urgency. What kind of urgency? Yeah, absolutely. Thank you so much for the opportunity. Um, right now, as we speak, we know the president is in Vuani, right? The Vuani issue should not have gone as far as it did in the burning of the schools. If people knew that they had platforms where they could actually articulate their views. Now, I think what we are trying to do as a foundation is to actually say, even if we are starting at national level, we would like this to go down to the provinces, to go down to districts, to even ward level, so that people feel they have somewhere to go, so that if issues are actually being dealt with, at, even if they are dealt with national level, but they are able to articulate their own views before they burn the schools, which is what is a, a tragedy. I mean, something that we fought so hard for, education in this country, becomes a weapon of destruction in the communities. It just doesn't make sense. Now, I think when the foundations were speaking amongst themselves, they realized that the voice will be much louder, the platform will be much, uh, what do you call that, more open if all of the foundations are able to come together instead of just one foundation saying one thing and one saying the other. It was just a conglomeration of the views that said, once we come together, I think we might be able to create that platform 
neutral that allows any organization or any human being in South Africa to feel safe in that space to articulate what they would actually like to like to say. Now, in the in the matter of agency is exactly the point where we are saying. Most of the time, as uh, Mr. Shop has already pointed it out, you see people already in the streets. Where have they gotten an opportunity to articulate their views? They don't have those platforms. And I think this is the beginning of what we hope is going to trickle all the way down to people's uh, l districts and, and cities and wherever, so that when they actually want to have an imbizu about something that bothers them, they know that should be dealt with, the issues will be taken up seriously, because we're going to make sure that there's a trickle up again of those views coming together to make sure that we all but address somebody, everybody's but somebody, problems. somebody, Mr. Ngobesa, might say, you are not the government. There is no way you can change my situation. No, we are not government, but then there is going to be a way that government is going to listen when we all speak the same. Let me, let me just give you an example one time. I, I was saying uh, in one group, hands up, all of you were part of the CODESA. Nobody said, CODESA? That happened in 19... Wh wherever. <laughs> and very few people got involved in that one. Now we are actually saying, can we open up, even if people call it a CODESA, it's fine, but let everybody's view come on board so that we all... And we're not going to be... We're not government. We're trying to make sure that people's voices are... Because when people are not heard, no matter what government is actually trying to do, they are doing it because government has to do what they are doing. But they've not heard what people are actually saying. I think that's why it's important for us to open the platform for everyone. Mr. Bukwana, I, before I see Mr. Ngobesa made, re re made reference to Vuani, before I came here... Uh, when I saw these pictures from Vuani, I went and I had a read of the Demarca Municipal Demarcation Act. And I, I, know, I don't know what the president is going to say today, but unfortunately, it is not the president that can change boundaries. It is the, it is the Municipal Demarcation Board. That's correct, Putumile. Um, it's, um, the, the president might go and uh, try to pacify the situation. But I think it relates exactly to the issues that um, um, Ms. Ngobese is talking about. Maybe let me start from the beginning and say we are a constitutional democracy. Democrat. I like that. And, and being a constitutional democracy, it means that all sorts of things that are being done in governing us are based on the rule of law. Even including issues like the demarcation have to be done on the basis of the rule of law. But Putumile, this is the reality of what has happened. This constitution was adopted um, 21 years ago. I think the reason for these foundations is to look back at the adoption of this constitution and say, what was the context of adopting this constitution? What, were the what has been the challenges that we faced as a country um, in terms of this constitution? What are the successes um, that we have gained because we've been a constitutional democracy? But I think the, the reality and the crisis is that many people have not been participants in dealing with the matters of the constitution. So I think this dialogue is to provide exactly that platform because it's not... Um, as you were saying um, off air earlier on, talking about parliamentary democracy and constitutional democracy, it's not a matter of what the majority uh, people in parliament wants, is but is what the is what the law requires that that will have to take the end of the day. So I think that's that's the situation we're talking about, and says it is the time for us to reflect on this constitution. Well, if you'd like to join us in today's discussion, you can call us on 011-714-5497 or 5498. Or you, you can tweet us at Rides Recourse. Uh, don't go away. We'll be back right after this. may be associated problem with the arteries of the heart in patients with hypertensive heart disease and in some instances it's just pure the muscle disease problem. The statistics show us that half the population of individuals with high blood pressure are not even aware that they've got high blood pressure. There's the amount of salt we eat because there's a big uh, influence on our blood pressure levels. 
So using less salt when you're cooking, less salty spices when you're cooking, not adding salt to the table, but rather using other spices and herbs to flavor your food. And then of course, how much sugar you eat is also very important. If you start becoming um, uncomfortable or where you feel that your effort tolerance is becoming less, mm. you can't lie flat, you run short of breath, you start swelling in the legs and so on. It's high time that one should consult a doctor. Join Health Talk every Saturday for all your health news. constitutional crisis in which we find ourselves. There is nothing wrong with our constitution. The problems that confront us do not arise from the structure or framework of the constitution. It arises from our failure to observe its guiding values and to embrace its principles. The core problem is that our president is not carrying out his duties in terms of section 83 of the constitution. He is not upholding, defending and respecting the letter and spirit of the constitution as the supreme law of the republic. And he is not promoting the unity of the nation and that which will advance the republic. <clears throat> the president has undermined the independence of the Chapter 9 institutions and organs of government, including the intelligence services, the National Prosecuting Authority, and the Hawks. He has not ensured their impartiality or their duty to exercise their powers and perform their functions without fear, favor, or prejudice. And then there are persistent reports supported by the former public protector and the courts that state-owned enterprises are being routinely abused to promote the personal and financial interests of some leaders and their families and associations. All this has become known as state capture. However, ladies and gentlemen, as Nsebizi Jonas recently pointed out, it goes further than state capture. It's a coup. As he put it, and I quote, you have a country being stolen in front of our own eyes. We are facing a coup via the very capture of the state. Apart from the chapter nine institutions and government agencies, parliament was supposed to provide another safeguard against abusive and unconstitutional executive action. However, it has failed to carry out its very oversight role, primarily because MPs are accountable to their political bosses. Well, that is uh, Mr. F.W. de Klerk, former president of the Republic of South Africa. Before you say Mr. de Klerk is top sucking what he's saying, that actually was a ruling of the Constitutional Court through Chief Justice Mohueng Mohueng that the president has not met his constitutional obligations. But first of all, let's take this call from Sia from Johannesburg. Sia, good afternoon and welcome to Rights and Recourse. Good afternoon, Mr. Matilda. Yes, Sia. Yes, sir. I'm, just, I'm just having a concern here with this uh, foundation. All of them, in fact. You see, there was a lot of problems. Even now in Boani, the schools were burning. All along, these foundations were keeping quiet. The schools are appalling in rural areas. You can go to Mdundu to my secondary school now. It's a mess. There's no structure. All those old structures of the old trans guys are falling apart. People are hungry. And they only jump in now. After there's the outcry about someone must fall and all those things. And now we are coming now to the this former uh, president declared is attacking Mali Mr. Malikane, Professor Malikane in fact. Why is he attacking Professor Malikane now? That is there's, there's some changes that is uh, going through now. 
Well, really, I'm creating a problem with all of them, starting from uh, the other foundation. And now I see that training forces now, with Zuma must fall, and they forget about other issues. I'm sorry, Mr. Matera, really. Thank you, Sia. Thank you, Sia. I expected that uh, if that's what's going to come out. Uh, are you not concerned? Anyone can take this question. Are you not concerned that there's already this, this move has already been touted as that you are entering into a political sphere? And when you get into a political sphere, they normally say it becomes rough in there and you are tainted with what's going on there. Mm -hmm. I, I think, but Dumele, all of these foundations are political foundations. They're quite well aware of the rules of the game as far as the politics is concerned. Mm -hmm. And Obviously, they are founded by former presidents. Correctly. <laughs> and none of them are scared of telling the truth. But the fact of the matter is the initiative, as, as uh, Budgina had indicated earlier on, we had already started it almost three years ago. And we understood that if you have a country that um, is a new country over a period of 20 years, that country is in need of renewal. Whether you had President Zuma or somebody else, the things that were there in 1994 are totally different with the things that you will see in 2014. And when we looked at this issue in 2014, indeed, it's very clear to us that even in the Constitution, there's a couple of things that need to be revisited. But those issues we were saying, possible the debates must cease to be the debates of the elite must cease to be the debates of the academics, must cease to be the exclusive domain of politicians. Let the people's voices be heard. And that's exactly what we're trying to do in this platform. The, the other thing that was raised by CEO was the fact that these things have been there all the time, but uh, the foundations didn't say a word. He made reference to Vuani, that there are problems in Vuani as we speak. I am not too sure. I noticed that people are, are having placards on the pictures that I saw saying it's do or die today. Yeah. I, I think uh, the points that are raised by C are, are understandable, given the fact that the um, foundations that are in here may have the footprints across the country, South Africa, but they do not necessarily operate in each and every community. And in the past, what you would find is that for whatever situation that requires some public opinion and the like, there will be contributions in terms of the writing that will be coming from div different uh, foundations, depending on, on their area of interest that may be. So it's not necessarily about them only showing up right now. There may be people from the Mount Frey in the Eastern Cape who may know of one of the foundations that is represented in here, having come in and sorted some real issues that are about governance and the uh, uh, parental participation in the, in the, in the interests of the learners that are in, uh, in to, to those particular schools. But they have not necessarily been all over the round. But in the case that has been drawing the national interest, you would find that you go into the website of some, if not all, of these foundations. There has already been pieces of opinion that were highlighted, but came to this particular point in time. These foundations say, with an, ex with an expert kind of a, a experience working in different communities, we really need to discuss the matters of common interest because they are raised by all of the people that we are interact with. So how about that we engage not on the political front, but socially about the issues that really emanate from the people themselves so that they can afford the opportunity. Mr. Gobese, uh, I have asked this question a number of times on this program of many of number of people who came here, Mr. Bokwana raised some of those and uh, one of them is do we as South Africans appreciate the fact that the founding fathers of this democracy decided that we are going to be a constitutional democracy rather than a parliamentary democracy? Because somebody said to me, in a parliamentary democracy, if you speak truth for power and politicians don't like that, they just go and change the, the act and, and create another law and create a Sobuko law like we've had with Sobuko. But in the, in the case of a, of a constitutional democracy, they can't do that. Um, and, and I think it's, a, it's exactly that, that I think is going to be interesting moving forward in South Africa. And I'm, I'm, I'm taking note of the fact that one of the tasks that I think would actually come from these foundations would be to educate ourselves about our constitution. 
because we find that people are one side, the constitution is on the other side, because people are not relating to the constitution the way it's supposed to impact you know, their lives. So they will think that, as we actually said, they will think that when the president goes there, he's going to solve their problems. They can't. The, the president may actually make a pronouncement, but be, within a constitutional democracy, there are ways of addressing those issues. But people are not aware of the laws that actually govern us so that they, they are able to use them to solve their problems. Because we have not actually, I don't think we've done enough in this country to empower people to understand how our constitution can empower them to get things done. And I think part of the duties that would actually be allocated to the people who are dialoguing even amongst themselves is to deal with the laws that deal that relate to their social issues so that we find avenues that bring us together, people and the constitution together, and we become more powerful. But right now there seems to be a, a divide. Mr. Pagona, I attended the first day I attended the first day of the, the launch day of the dialogue and many people dismiss it as a just a talk show. Uh, somebody said the former presidents would like to rule from the grave. In this case, uh, the former president is, and statesman would like to bring us back from the, the precipice. But That's me, what we'd like to believe. But to me, like, there, were, <coughs> there were three objectives of, of the event on Friday. One, it was the issue of really making a call to this nation. And that call is a call to say, I think all of us um, are quite clear that our country is facing a national general crisis. But we are unable to define that national general crisis in a coherent form. So we needed to say, indeed, this country needs a national dialogue to be able to define that national general crisis in a coherent fashion. But at the same time, together to seek solutions that can respond to this common challenge and that solution be a common solution that is defined by all of us as, 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 the, as the South Africans. The presence of all of these um, presidents and other prominent um, individuals and other prominent organizations that were there actually made that endorsement and confirmed that indeed there's a need for that. So immediately when they have said that, you will see that there were about 300 people. And all of those people converge into groups and say, can we not live here, but sit here and draft an agenda um, in terms of which this um, national dialogue um, will be held. Now that you're on that one, uh, is, I saw people from Save South Africa, I saw people from the Africana Brutal Bond, I saw people from all walks of life, and, and I was told even the churches are part of this group, but what I want to know, how do you connect with the freedom movement? You, you, you see, it put to me like that the freedom movement is constituted by the political parties. And, and one of the things that we have to respond to in this country is that um, the crisis of a post-apartheid South Africa has been that of the demobilization of the civil society. Um, all of us had this idea that the government has got all the answers for all our problems. But in reality, many of the answers can actually be found amongst the people. So when you were there on Fridays, you're saying you had the churches, you had Damagrecha, you had young people from high school, you had, you had PhD, uh, PhD students, you had professors, you had people that have never been to school, all manner of these people, and all of them expressing various issues which they said to us, they want those issues to be part of the agenda. So that was the second part. Of, of, the, of, of, of that day on Friday. And indeed, we have worked on that agenda. And that agenda is going to be developed into this national document that we will be utilizing. Let's continue. You'll, you'll tell me about that, because I still need to know is what is your relationship with the other groupings that are also on, on the outside, or uh, 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 what do you say, outside parliament, that are also saying the same language. Let's take this call from Sapira from Harare in Zimbabwe. Sapira, good afternoon, and welcome to Rights and Recourse. Good afternoon, my brother. Yes. Thank you for having me. I've been listening to a lot of uh, discussions from South Africa of late concerning issues uh, such as uh, the radical transformation. Now we have this issue of uh, the two former vice presidents who are getting also 
organized. I, I as a Zimbabwean, I am very worried and concerned because South Africa, as far as we are concerned in Zimbabwe, we happen to believe we are somehow part of South Africa. Now, all these things which are happening in South Africa are giving us sleepless nights at times. I was going to place most South Africans, to be honest with you, that before all the transformations and these radical transformations takes place, South Africans need to be cognizant of the fact that they have a lot to learn from Zimbabwe. What is happening right now in South Africa, to be honest with you, already took place and we experienced most of these things already. The first thing South Africans have to do, I would like to suggest, is to make sure not only they transform the land reform or the other uh, industrial reforms or transformations they are trying to do, but the judiciary, if he, the judiciary is not transformed or reformed, no progress is ever going to take place in South Africa. Because whatever South Africans are going to do, it, in terms of progressing, what they would have charted the course from their liberation struggle will still be reversed by the judiciary. The South African judiciary, I'm afraid, has a lot to be desired. And you need to first and foremost take a radical reformation of the judiciary. That is all before you talk about land, before you talk about uh, uh, Thank you, Tapira. Thank you, Tapira. We heard what you are saying. That's exactly the difference we're talking about. South Africa is a constitutional democracy, and Zimbabwe is probably a parliamentary democracy. And in South Africa, the judiciary is interpreting the constitution. If you'd like to join us, you can do like uh, Tapira is done from Zimbabwe and phone us on 011-714-5497 or 5498, or you can uh, tweet us at Recourse or email us to riserecourse at sabc.co.za. Stay with us. From the moment you start your day. Good morning, everybody. It is 6 o'clock. We are there for you. You want a guarantee from the leadership that we should not be leaders who will steal? I'm prepared to give that guarantee that we should not steal from our people. We bring your morning into perspective. This is the reason they keep putting fees up. They're not getting enough money. We'll make sure that you get the full story. The police officers from specifically Moffat View Police Station, they support these brothels. What have you found upon your investigations in this matter? I cannot deny those allegations. And you can count on the weather team with expertise. Join us live at 6 a.m. daily. What is environmental health? In section 24 of the constitution, the environmental right has a second part, which is to encourage people to be active citizens and gives us the right to, uh, to participate in politics and organize and, and raise awareness so that the environmental right can be guaranteed. We're using coal and wood and paraffin to cook with or to heat their space or to heat water. Mm. These are basic fundamentals and I think if we can address that alone, mm. we will make a huge impact, an environmental impact on the health of our population. Food that comes into the country, uh, the vigilance at the ports and harbours is being checked at the moment currently with a, by environmental practitioners who are port officers. 
at those ports. They need to be more stringent in terms of control of what comes into the country. Join Health Talk every Saturday for all your health news. Welcome back to Rights and Recourse as we discuss the issues that the dialogue, the, the National Foundation Dialogue Initiative is bringing to us that we should talk about the issues that are plaguing this country, especially the democracy in this country. We are now joined by T.N. Yellow, Chief Executive of the F.W. de Klerk Foundation. I didn't keep that question for you, but I want to ask you, what are the real issues from your perspective which the initiative would like the country to address and how? I think uh, F, uh, Pre President F.W. de Klerk made reference to some of them. Yes. Thank you, Demili. Um, we think there's a, a broad array of issues. And these issues didn't start now. As, as Max said, some of them started in 1994 and we had not addressed them properly. Uh, and we realized from, from our side, from the foundation side, that some of these issues we will only be able to address by discussing them again. It's almost a revival of, of the mode that we had in the 90s about talking to each other. We, we think we've, we've lost that capacity slightly. And it probably goes with what Max said about civil society, not not being active enough. And th this is therefore a civil society call. It's, it's for the ordinary people to speak. Obviously, we don't think that, that, that these people and us would, would do the legislation. We, we hope it will, it will push up and it will become on the agenda of the, of the political parties. But I can, you know, there are many of those. There, there's inequality, there's unemployment, there's racial polarization, there's racism. We ma you mentioned land reform, etc., etc. I think you can make a list almost in every section and sector of society, there are problems that all of us would like to have been better. The, the interesting thing is that in our discussions of more, more than almost three years, we agreed on, on most of these issues. We, we, we don't necessarily, we won't necessarily agree exactly on how to solve them. There we will need discussion on what are the mechanisms to solve this issue. But if you ask a group of people, any group of people in South Africa, what do you want for your children? I bet my meager pension that they would 90% agree on the themes. L let me come to something else, probably uh, Max, let me come to you. Uh, obviously, as a nation, we have seen a great deal of obfuscation, especially on issues pertaining to the rule of law, where people force their own interpretations and rulings by our courts, including the Apex Court and the Constitutional Court. But, but Dumile, you, you must understand this. Um, with our constitutional court being um, as at its infancy as it is, it has a much um, greater responsibility in developing a jurisprudence. We will still going to develop this jurisprudence for the next hundred years. So I think we cannot be using the court simple for narrow purposes, but I think it's quite clear now that Mr. Bogota, just hold on a moment. I've been taking uh, instructions there. We are now going to cross over to Vuani in Limpopo, where President Zuma was going to address the people of Vuani. Let's go across there almost immediately. <laughs> Oh, 
kudu boamba tiri. Marajino vukos kudu ba chiamba. Zinyaka mubuso ufindule. Zino karife mubuso chifinga cha ufindule. Amanda! Amanda! Viva, Makato, viva! Passing over the Mlele Passi! Passing over the Mlele Passi! Ah, what about Fambula? Comrade! Comrade! Nimelo ya bodi nimelo ya shu. A uno ri nimelo ya bodi bi eri tveri di patu kanuna na yo. Nimelo ya bodi nimelo ya shu. Di bolu bori keta uri bara de pan. Ka uri we na uri soko ya malamble. Ane to zwar gwe ta zora. Bato zumbu la muskosi kulu ba konya ngenta. Robu tiwanga tiwa eles na television uri mu presidente bato tabara adres. Ndivone babo teba rina tanduro kazi ni mero vyashu. Ndosu hifa. Nana ni kota tazuma. Evan, mupurazene ni mupurazene wa shangolote. Andi mu president wa shuna rin. Adibi ngangia mrao urukwe te amini. Mana dombe la makombrede. Aba piye ife. Ange mrao atende ange i. Ati dibu runga wako te amini. Mara batu wato ubara. Anandi sole rasa kostota sesu. Ngori dhari kota kata masina. Zino kombrede. Varanga panga wako sha wanga orive ni uni kuhuba hane la uamba. Zino kompreji. Mubusa wa ritila mtangana na mwuzini ya sasa ni kare wako hana. Ni kare wako mwano tangana. Programu wari wako ya humisa la kare nebane. Vane Bashang, Zino, Vatuba Hash, Chayola Chi Wati, this is a foreign Nina Mushumori, Arai Hava Rova Rango Panda Baliko Shawa Balabin, Nerdoamba, Vanero Ketuanga Bat, Hava Vanero Fonga Riabo Ketuanga Bat, Ketuata Duru. Aba tuwa wadra saba rungwa taturu. Zino kombreis. Kombreis. Rojeru wa chayo. Marani yoto mandambe yezu. Aba batu. Aba rifuni. Ringasiri musimu presidente wa shango. Oda. Ako doma na rushaka lwa fuwani. Wonewa decide or no a usaifi uri a demori rinerima tapadabu. Zio kompreti. Zena ita aningo kaka ni chiba tuisa. Naro kaka na pezi koskuru. Ngori koskuru ni koskuru yashu. Zino. Eh comrade, o famacelo, se tu sou capiê langonan, vai na baia escolon, mas pegará a chuma, rito vai com busti o angavembe district muito espalhit, rodibu.
This Ford Cougar thing is becoming a hot potato for them, excuse the pun. US car maker Ford has finally admitted that a fault is causing some of its Ford Cougar SUVs to catch fire and it also formally issued a recall in South Africa. Ford needs to take accountability. We'll work with our dealers and uh, try to come up with a way that uh, satisfies them. While we continue with our discussion here around the issue of uh, dialogue, national dialogue, as per the national foundations of the various presidents that met in Johannesburg on Friday. Tiers, you wanted to say something around the I, issue I, I want of to say it must be clear that, that this initiative is not an anti-something. It's pro-constitution, pro-democracy, and it's pro-talking. So that's the first thing. And, and I wanted to add to what Nana said about the power of the constitution. You know, sometimes the constitution gets blamed unjustly so, for failures of, of politics and failures of, of plans. I think we must say that, that the elephant in the room is that if everything had been fine in our country, if we had a growth rate of 6%, unemployment down by 10%, there wouldn't be a National Foundations Dialogue Initiative. Let's be clear about that. There are trouble. There's trouble in our country. That's why we're here. But sometimes the Constitution gets blamed for what it shouldn't be blamed. Give me give an example with rent reform. It's widely believed that the willing buyer, willing seller principle, which, which had failed to a large extent, is in the Constitution. It's not. It's not prescribed. It was a political decision by the government. And therefore the government can change it. And I'm, I'm quite happy if they adhere to the constitutional guidelines about land reform. There should be land reform. But don't blame the Constitution for something like the willing buyer, willing seller. And that's just one example where I think, as someone said earlier, Perhaps we don't know the Constitution well. I mean, we at the Edward Kerr Foundation is very concerned that we should have civic education also around the Constitution from a, from a school level already. The other question, I, uh, let's, let's take the question that needs to be asked. What does this say about our constitutional provisions, section 91, that denotes that the cabinet is the sole preserve of the president? The president is, is the person who decides to reshuffle the cabinet and the constitution gives it that power. Somebody said to me, when we made that, when we put that clause in the constitution, we thought we were going to have President Mandela off of all the time. <laughs> no, 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 but there's, there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. Um, if, if the president is going to run the country, he needs a team that he trusts and he needs a team that he believes, he believes in. And, and, and I, think, I think every other president or prime minister must be given um, that, sort of, that sort of right. Um, but what has become a serious question that has been I mean, um, raised um, in the matter that the ends and you were referring to earlier on, it's, it's, it's really some of the decisions that appear very irrational um, when those things are being taken. That issue has never been tasted, tested whether the president have to exercise that right rationally and transparently. Now, now that it has been confirmed that it's an executive decision, um, we now understand that right has to be done rationally. It has to be done in a transparent manner. In the time that we have, I think uh, F uh, President F. W. Clerk referred to this. A sovereign Parliament is sitting on the Fonseil Slabert report on electoral reform. The question really is, should we have a change in electoral reform where the President and members of Parliament are elected directly in a constituency electoral system instead of what we have now? Okay. I believe we should. I don't believe it should be totally elected as representatives. I think Vansel Slavot said 50-50 like municipal elections. And one could be cynical and say, well, the system at local level, which is 50-50, didn't bring us great transparency and great uh, responsibility and, and uh, accountability. But the point is, if it's at the national level that way, then at least the people can demand it you know, on the ground. So I think it's a good thing. The interesting thing is, and, and I remember this very well, is that the reason why we didn't have this and didn't consider this in the negotiations is we were running out of time. There was simply, you remember the deadline, we, we, our country was burning. We needed an election as soon as possible. And therefore, the politicians said, look, we will not have time to demarcate uh, districts now. Let us go with this system and in course, and then the Francais Salbert uh, report was done, and I think we, it's, it's worth it to, to reopen it again. If I remember, you were deeply involved in those processes of CODESA. 
I was the head of the administration, but I wasn't involved in the politics. <laughs> but, 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 but I mean, the point that the ANS is making, um, but Domila, there was another complication. The, the other complication is you had um, almost 100%, um, almost 90% of the adult people that were supposed to vote having never voted before. You needed to avoid in a complicated system of voting. But at the same time, we understood that that system will be a greatly expensive system because it will be you, you'll have to raise your own monies to do this, myself and everybody else. And there was a genuine fear that those that had been running the country before have access to resources um, will be able to take that issue and run away with. I don't want us as the foundations to say this is the way this matter should go. And I think this is one of the interesting issues um, for dialogue within our communities. The question, yeah. Ms. Mbobesa, is uh, people are saying, we've been talking and talking, where to from here? Where do we go from here? Uh, the idea was to say after launching, we will be going to the provinces for people to do the same. We should never stop talking in South Africa. And the fact that we are still talking about some things that happened in '94 and we are now in 2017, and nothing in between has actually happened. It suggests to us that these things should be some things that we are talking about almost all the time. It should not happen when we have a crisis. For example, the issue of the Constitution, yes, it came in, but when did we sit and review whether the Constitution is what South Africans really want? We don't know. We still have to go back to the people, open up that debate again and say, it should not be the last time we look at the issues that are in the Constitution. We should make this a regular 10-year um, uh, what you call dialogue or whatever, so that every time we have new ideas coming in, we shape the country, moving things forward, not based on what happened 20 years ago. While well, we have a great deal of people out there who are very angry and they are going to say, we've been talking for too long, freedom in our lifetime. That's what people like Anton Nambedi and others said. To conclude this program, I revert once again to revered Franz Fanon from his book, The Wretched of the Earth. I quote, the weakness of political parties lies not only in their mechanical imitation of an organization which is used to handling the struggle of the proletariat within a highly industrialized capitalist society. Innovation and adaptation should have been made as to the type of organization at the local level. The great mistake, the inherent flaw of most of the political parties in then underdeveloped regions has been traditionally to address first and foremost the most politically conscious elements. This has been Rights and Recourse. This program is the views expressed on this program are not necessarily those of the SABC. This program is repeated at five on Monday morning. From, from, you can also find us on YouTube and you can also continue tweeting on our program. From me and the rest of the crew, goodbye.